Again, welcome everyone to our all Sangha meeting. We'll get started in just a minute. We appreciate everyone's patience while we let everyone into the room. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started then. So welcome, welcome everyone. We're so glad that you've joined us this evening. And my name is Catherine Turner. My pronouns are she, her, Elaya. Uh, we'll do more for we'll do more in-depth introductions in a moment. We're going to start this evening's meeting with announcements. So for, will the person who's designated to lead the announcements please go ahead? Well, maybe there are no announcements. <laughs> so Catherine, should I start? Um, yeah, if there aren't any. Uh, so do, does anyone have any announcements? And if not, then Susan, please, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you. Thanks, I'm Susan Kaufman. I'm the president of the IMCC board. And I am here to welcome you and to explain a little bit about um, how the evening will go. First, I wanna thank you all for coming here tonight to contribute to the future of our Sangha. We as a Sangha are in transition. Some of us are strongly affected by that, some of us less so, and some of us may not feel affected at all, but change is happening. We have moved from the organization envisioned by our founders, Susan Stone, Pat Coffey, and Sharon Beckman Brindley. And the story goes as they sat at Susan's kitchen table to a community they never could have imagined with members here in Charlottesville and others zooming in from far flung places. We need new models for how we govern ourselves, how we lead, how we coexist within our surrounding community how we sustain and even how we grow as our original population ages. Both the board and our DEIJ committee recommended hiring a consultant to lead this process and a consultant committee was formed. Many, many thanks to this incredible committee who worked hard to define our needs, to identify candidates, to interview them and to provide a choice for the board. They ultimately chose Katherine Turner to work with us and we as a board are delighted with their choice. Katherine brings a wealth of experience as an organizational consultant and she's worked on a similar effort um, undertaken by Triangle Insight of Durham who Ron Vereen is a, a teacher and is the Sangha that uh, Jean Van Gammer belonged to. Katherine's first task was to form an advisory committee to support this effort. An important aspect of her proposal was that her work be done in collaboration with our Sangha from the beginning. So you will be meeting each of the advisory committee members in a, in a little while. Her next priority was to meet with you, our Sangha, to let you know about the rationale for her, just a minute, I just lost my, my page. Um, the rationale for her effort and to let you know her goals and to hear your hopes and your needs and your concerns about IMCC moving forward. So here's how the meeting will go. After a meditation by our teacher, Jean Van Gammert, I'll introduce Catherine. She'll give you an overview of the rapid assessment and strategic visioning, planning, and capacity strengthening process with a DEIJ lens that she will be leading. Next will be breakout sessions where you'll have a facilitated opportunity to respond to questions, uh, to talk about your experience at IMCC and to let us know your hopes and concerns. We'll end with some time for reflection about what was discussed and for your questions about this process. 
We're grateful for your presence here tonight and we'll continue to elicit your input through this revisioning process. At our last community meeting, which was back in February, I shared some reflections about Sangha that I think are relevant tonight. Thich Nhat Hanh is quoted as saying, the next Buddha will be a Sangha. As you're listening and speaking tonight, you are enriching, enriching and strengthening our Sangha. Our Sangha is a jewel and is here, whoever is at the helm, whoever is teaching, whoever is sitting in the chairs. We are each other's teachers. And this opportunity for listening and sharing tonight is a powerful opportunity to practice together. I'm pleased to introduce our consultant, Catherine Turner, who will be directing the rest of the evening. Catherine's the founder and president of Global Citizen, a consulting firm that works in the United States and internationally to strengthen leaders' capacity to affect organizational and social transformation in service of a better world. She has experience in areas such as strategic planning, organizational transformation, leadership development, and donor development, all done through a DEIJ lens. She's founded and served on the board of directors of nonprofit organizations and has won numerous awards for excellence in leadership and advocacy for public health. And as I said earlier, Catherine comes highly recommended by Triangle Insight, who engaged her in similar work to what we at IMCC are asking of her. So thank you, Catherine, for being with us. Thank you so much, Susan, for that lovely introduction. And um, hello, everyone. I'm just delighted to be with you all here this evening and thrilled to see so many people come and participate in this meeting. And this is exactly what we were hoping for and have been planning for for quite a while now. Um, so I would love to thank you again for that introduction. And um, I would now like to invite the advisory group members to introduce themselves and briefly state their primary reason for serving on the advisory group and their commitment to this process. And just briefly um, in, uh, in, as a reminder, as Susan had introduced to us earlier in this meeting, um, this is really part of the engagement that this is a very uh, collaborative process that we're co-designing and co-facilitating the entire process. And so um, the initial step was to ask for uh, the community to form a DEIJ um, advisory group that would really advise every step of this process and co-create it. So who would like to start with their introductions? Well, you already know who I am. Um, and the main reason I, I wanted to be a part of this is you know, to represent the board, to represent the Sangha and just the excitement of, this is something I've never done before. As all of you may know, I have never been the president of a board before. So to have the experience of um, Catherine's wisdom and to do this with other, other leaders in our Sangha um, seemed like an incredible opportunity. How about if I call on Phil? Sure. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm Phil DuPont. Um, I'm the vice president of the board. And um, I'm also a member of the DEIJ committee and have been in uh, multiple racial affinity groups over the last seven years. So I've, I've felt committed to this work and um, and, and seeing more and more of my world through a DEIJ lens. And so as because of my role on the board and my experience, I was really excited to be a part of this uh, advisory committee. Thank you. And I'll call on Sarah. Thanks, Phil. So I'm Sarah. Um, I'm here representing the Young Adult Sangha on our DEIJ committee. 
Uh, when I first started coming to IMCC, I kind of struggled to find a sense of community uh, with the larger Sangha, but since have gotten more involved with the young adult Sangha, Eco Safa, and more recently the Sangha Leaders Cohort, and I've kind of found um, what I now feel are my people. Um, and so in working on this committee, I'm hoping to help people find kind of that sense of belonging earlier so we can keep them around IMCC as long as possible. And I'll go ahead and call on John. Hi, everyone. John Wilson. Um, I'm representing the committee from the Sangha at large. Um, I've been in IMCC for at least five years. It's made a profound impact on me. Um, I'm in a racial affinity group and uh, part of a, a couple of DEI committees uh, related to my work. And so I um, was very happy to uh, um, accept an invitation to be on the DEIJ advisory committee. Uh, DEIJ is very important to me. Um, I really think throughout all of society, we should be moving towards uh, reducing barriers so that everybody can participate uh, in um, throughout all kinds of organizations in life and particularly at IMCC, I wanna see those barriers reduced so that folks can participate to the extent they want to and avail themselves of the teachings to the maximum extent that they'd like to. Um, Mary Louise. Sure, hi everyone. Um, I'm Mary Louise involved in whew, a lot of different ways. Um, representing the teachers and the guiding teachers council on, on this committee, um, involved elsewhere in a racial affinity group and with the Sangha leaders cohort. Um, I, uh, I also really enjoyed working with some, with some other great people on the committee where the, where the consultant, where Catherine was chosen. So thank you to everybody who served in that way as well. Um, I have, been involved in strategic planning processes throughout my career, and I believe in them. Um, I also have this really strong sense that I believe in this community, and I've seen so many wonderful people step forward as we've gone through a lot of changes that I, um, I think there's a lot of promise in planning together what we envision our future to be. So I was happy to be a part of it. Um, and let's see, who else haven't we called on the committee? Am I missing anyone? Or it goes back to Catherine. And Dolly, have you had a chance to introduce yourself? No, I'm, my name is Dolly. I'm the operations director and, um, I'm acting as a scribe, but, um, I actually asked to support this committee because I am I'm really interested in how organizations change and how they um, grow and develop over time. And I know that that's um, it can be challenging. And I'm I'm really hoping to be supportive of this process for the whole sangha. Mm, and you are. So thanks everyone uh, for the advisory group. Um, it's been a delight to work with you all. And um, we've been meeting very regularly every week, in fact, um, in preparing this meeting for you all and also preparing for this process overall. Um, so I would love to invite everyone now. I uh, would, would love to invite everyone in the Sangha to introduce yourselves. Um, I just posted in the chat. If you could just type in the chat your name, your pronouns, if you would like to share them, um, your Sangha role, if that's if you have a Sangha role, uh, and the number of months or years that you've been associated with IMCC. So just to get a sense, um, we obviously see some people's faces and names and some people's pronouns um, in the little squares in Zoom, but I um, would love for an opportunity for you all to go ahead and type your introductions in the chat. We wish we could hear from each of you verbally, uh, but with such a nice large participation, unfortunately we wouldn't have time for that. Yeah, great. Thank you, Greg, for getting us started off. And um, it's, uh, it's wonderful to see the number of years that many of you have been associated. Um, and for some of you, it may be a matter of months. 
Um, I think if we added up all of the years, it would be quite an impressive number. So that really speaks to your Sangha, to your community, um, and its importance for so many people. Great, thank you all. So Susan, Rebecca, Helen, Barbara, Dave, Joe, I won't read all of them off, but um, welcome, welcome. It's wonderful to see your introductions. All right, so please continue to um, introduce yourselves. This, I'm enjoying seeing you all come in in the chat <laughs> for some of you so many years that you can't count. <laughs> Yeah, it could really be interesting to add all of this up. All right, so um, again, it's a real pleasure and honor to be working with you all. Um, as Susan noted, I was uh, it was my honor to facilitate and shepherd the Triangle Insight Meditation community through their transition process. Um, and I've, of course, um, see a number of my dear friends from that group um, and it's wonderful to hear also how their work is continuing and continuing to evolve and uh, how their transformation really has, uh, you know, transformed the organization and also how they operate. And whenever I see them, um, I always enjoy hearing all the specifics of how things are going with them now. That's very gratifying. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again um, and wanted to just share First of all, you know, specifically the purpose of this meeting, which again was co-designed and co-planned with the DEIJ advisory group and myself. And our goal here is really to engage you all in a conversation um, in order to lay the foundation for the work ahead. That um, when I first proposed a process to, to do with you all, um, one, I wanted again it to be a very collaborative process with the advisory group and really with everyone, with all of you in the Sangha. So I really invite you all to participate as fully as you're able. Um, so we wanna lay the foundation for the work ahead. Um, I'll provide an overview of the process, um, which is a, involves a rapid assessment and then strategic visioning, planning and capacity strengthening, all of which is with the DEIJ or diversity, equity, inclusion and justice, um, as well as racial equity focus. Um, and respond to any questions or comments that you all have. Um, and then to really engage you all in rich discussion. Um, so we're gonna be spending quite a bit of time this evening in small breakout groups to give you all an opportunity to really dive into some questions and, and talk with each other. And then also to invite you to participate and provide input throughout the entire process. And I want to say a little bit um, more about that in a moment, about ways that you can participate throughout the process. So Susan had already reviewed the meeting agenda. Um, and so we're in the overview and opportunities for engagement section of the agenda now. And then, like I said, we'll have 30 minutes, a good amount of time for discussion and breakout groups. And then uh, time to come back together in the main room to really hear your reflections on your breakout group discussions and any comments and questions that may arise for you. And then uh, we'll talk about next steps. And again, just a reminder of how you can participate and um, a silent moment of appreciation and closure. So in terms of the process, again, this is um, what I had proposed when I was first applying to, to work with you all. Um, so again, beginning with forming a small but representative advisory group, which we've done, and then to co-design and facilitate this meeting, this preparatory virtual conversation with all of you, and then to conduct a rapid assessment. And the assessment will involve a number of components. One is that I will be reviewing all of the relevant current documents, organizational documents like your bylaws, your mission, any vision, values, statements, any DEIJ commitment statements, you know, all of the kind of current statements, documents, um, other artifacts, organizational artifacts, even reviewing your website to see how you present in order to inform my understanding of the current state of your organization. What we're also doing is, uh, again, in a very collaborative way, is that members of the DEIJ advisory group um, are going to be reaching out to other sanghas and finding out about their change process. A, a good number of sanghas around the country, I imagine around the world, 
have been undergoing similar transformation processes, also with the DEIJ or diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, and racial equity uh, centered focus, and to really learn from the wisdom of other sanghas. Um, so obviously Triangle Insight is one, um, and there are a number of other sanghas that have undergone similar processes. And we did this as well with TMI, uh, with the Triangle Insight Meditation Community, and it was very informative to learn from other sanghas. Um, and by the way, um, a number of leaders and teachers at the Triangle Insight Meditation Community have very generously offered to come and share their wisdom and their experience with us. So we will be engaging with them and learning from them directly. Um, and so we'll, we'll be letting you know more about that as we organize that. Um, and so then we'll be pulling all of the findings together from what we've learned from other sanghas, um, what I've assessed in terms of your current state um, documents, and then developing findings and recommendations based on that. Um, other sources of data are meetings like this and the discussions that we'll be having with you all. We're going to be recording um, in a Google document your responses to the discussion questions. This is, this is part of the assessment process is to ask you all to respond to these questions and really hear from you and use all of the information you're providing in the assessment. So once we have the assessment findings and recommendations, those will inform um, our next steps, which is really to, one, um, I'll be kind of co-designing and facilitating these board member and teacher development sessions where we'll really talk through what does it mean to develop an organizational structure and governance structure that is DEIJ and racial equity focused or centered? Um, what does that look like? And, um, and that's, again, where we're also going to be learning from other sanghas about what they've done and how that's been working for them. Um, then we'll be undergoing, I'll be leading a strategic visioning and planning process with board members. Um, and then we'll be having another conversation with you all about both the findings of the assessment um, and kind of the new DEIJ racial equity focused organizational structure and governance. Um, and then we'll do a, a final debriefing session with the board and advisory group members to really kind of discuss the process that we've undergone. And um, I'll be sharing any recommended next steps from there. And so that will leave you all with, um, you know, there may be uh, likely will be updated bylaws, updated other governments documents and processes that have been developed, um, perhaps other commitment statements. Um, and, and that those will form the basis of the, and the structure of the organization and the ways that you'll be operating from here on out. So that's um, an overview of the process. I just want to pause for a moment and see what questions or comments anyone might have about this process. Feel free to either uh, raise your hand in the, you can uh, do the hand raising uh, or just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question or make a comment. Okay, uh, if no questions or comments, uh, let's see. Oh, um, Susan, yeah, great question. That's fine. I'm happy to share these um, this slide set afterwards. So Dolly, maybe we can um, I can upload them into the Google Docs. You could share that link, or uh, we can send them out to everybody afterwards. Yeah, I'm happy to share the whole slide set. Um, I agree that it would be helpful for people to be able to review afterwards as well. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, in terms of engagement, we really welcome your engagement throughout the process. This is your Sangha, and we really want to hear from you um, in all sorts of ways, in whatever ways are most comfortable for you, um, what your views on the process are, what your input is, and what direction you would want to see the Sangha going. So the ways that you can participate are to participate in meetings like this, obviously. 
um, to speak with any member of the Hearing, Ethics, and Reconciliation Committee, as well as the DEIJ advisory group members. So you've just um, heard from them, the DEIJ advisory group members. Um, is it on the website or where can people get a listing of the Hearing, Ethics, and Reconciliation Committee members, just so that everybody knows who they are and, and how, to, how to contact them? Can someone answer that question? Hi, everybody. I'm Julie Combesser. I'm co-chair of the Hearing, Ethics, and Reconciliation Committee, or council, it's sometimes called. And um, we have a page on the website with our current members listed, and also how to contact us to request a one-on-one -on -one listening session. We will also be holding um, a community-wide listening session in the coming month or so. More on that later. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that information. Julie. Um, and Ken, I believe you had a question. Sorry, once I have my screen up, I can't see everybody. So did you have a question, Ken? Yeah, I was wondering over what period of time all this will play out. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and we haven't developed a kind of specific timeline for the entire process. Um, and it's going to be, you know, we're going to be meeting when obviously when the groups involved are available, um, but certainly it will be over the next few months for sure. Uh, but we don't have, again, a, a, a timeline for the entire process. Did that answer your question? Yes, thanks. Uh-huh, thanks for your question. Okay, anyone else? Okay. Um, so again, uh, feel free to speak with those uh, committee and advisory group members. Um, there also is a confidential Google form that I've created um, and that only I will have access to those comments that people upload. And so I'll go ahead and share this in the chat. And then also um, I believe this being shared out by I don't know what's going on. Zoom has not been letting me copying and pasting lately. I'm not sure what's happening. So I don't know if Dolly, if you're able to. Mm, thank you. Okay. So Dolly just uploaded the Google link in the chat. Um, and Dolly's also been sharing that out through, I think through the newsletter and a number of different, um, different communication vehicles. So feel free to upload a comment there anytime. I'll just be checking it regularly. I will be the only one to see your comment. Um, you can post comments anonymously. You do not have to provide your name. If you would like to provide your name and email address, um, you can feel free to, but you don't have to. So they can't be anonymous comments. And again, I'm the only one who will see them and I won't share them with anyone else. They're strictly to, you know, for me to have additional information to inform this process. And we want to create a mechanism for anyone in the Sangha to provide your comments confidentially or anonymously at any point. So those are our opportunities for engagement. Any comments or questions about them? OK, great. Well, let's go on to our, um, our discussion then. And so we're going to be um, going into breakout groups. Dolly has already created them, which I imagine was a rather complex process because we have a good number of participants here, which we're thrilled about. And so we are putting you into seven breakout groups. Each breakout group will have a facilitator and a scribe. So the person who's going to be uh, typing your responses. They're going to be typing your responses into a different Google document. Um, and that is so that we can really record your responses and again, really review them and use them very actively as part of our assessment process. So feel, feel free, your name will not be recorded with your comments. Um, so those will be confidential comments. So feel free to be as open as possible and, and as frank as possible. Um, and we will be uh, coming back at 8.15 Eastern time. 
So that's our time frame for the breakout group discussion. These are the group agreements that I would propose that we utilize for our discussions. So if you all could just review these group agreements and um, let me know if there are any that you have questions about, if you're not sure what they are, because in a moment I'm gonna ask if you will, if everyone will agree to hold ourselves to our group agreements. But go ahead and read the group agreements on the screen. And let me know if there are any that you would like to clarification on or to raise for conversation. I have a question. Oh. Mm -hmm. Please go um, ahead. The one recognize positive intentions and address impact. Can you expand on that one a little bit, Catherine? Yeah, thanks, Sharon. That's such an important one. Um, so that is that it's important that we both bring and assume positive intentions when we're engaging in conversations like this. Um, and so that that is a that is what we're asking um, everyone to do. That said, even with positive intentions, it is always possible and, and will often happen that people might inadvertently say or do something that causes harm to, to someone else. Um, so even though my there our intentions may be good, it doesn't negate the fact that we nonetheless had an unintentional harmful impact on the other person. And when we do that, that we just recognize that that, that is what has happened. We take ownership of our um, impact on others, and then we work to rectify that and prevent that from happening again in the future. Thank you. But that, that important distinction between our intentions and our impact. Thanks for asking about that. Okay, I've made them larger. And any other questions about the group agreements? If not, um, could we agree, all agree to hold ourselves to our group agreements? Okay, thank you. Thumbs up or head nod. <laughs> Good, all right, thank you so much. All right, so these are the um, questions that we will have in the oh, breakout group. Um, so again, Dolly, if you could please uh, copy and paste the questions into the chat so that everyone has the question, before, all the questions before we go into the breakout room discussions. And then um, once those are posted in the chat, then we'll go um, into our breakout rooms and your facilitators will be leading you. What we've done is we've assigned certain questions to certain groups to make sure that we get responses to all the questions. But if your group would like to then go to, um, after you've gone through your two assigned questions, if you want to and have time to discuss other questions, we welcome you to discuss those other questions also. Great, so the questions are all in the chat so that you can refer back to them in the breakout room if you want to see what are the other questions and which ones do we want to address as a group. Um, so I don't wanna take any more time um, unless anyone has any burning questions. Let's go ahead into our breakout groups and um, thank you so much to the facilitators. I'll be just um, listening in on the discussions but I won't be facilitating. So I'll just be going from room to room listening in. I want to now just invite anyone to share any reflections, comments that you have about your um, breakout room discussions. Obviously we won't share any comments, uh, the names of people who shared particular comments, to keep those confidential, but just overall kind of what any reflections or comments that anyone would like to share in this main room. Heather, are you raising your hand? Oh. Did you want to unmute? Sorry, and then with someone else, Jane, were you speaking? Yeah. Okay. Should I go what, first? Yeah, why don't you go ahead, oh. Jane? Okay. No, I, I really appreciated our discussion. Um, I felt like we just did an, a nice job of sharing um, how IMCC 
has an effect on us and then our own kind of choices and about our participation and all. I'm not really giving any specifics right now, but it was a well thought um, con conversation. Wonderful. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate that. Heather, did you want to share? Did you have your hand raised or no? Okay, I may have misinterpreted your gesture. Who else would like to share? I can Any? share. Yeah, thanks, Barbara. Um, so I facilitated the group that uh, we tackled question one and not really got to question three, but just lessons learned and um, from the past and present and and um, I just thought it was so great how this group of people shared really honestly about their experiences and their confusions, that there seems to be a lot of confusion about all the things that we're doing. And um, and I've heard a concern that I have heard for so many years from so many people that when they first came to IMCC of not feeling really welcome, not feeling like they fit in that it was very clicky. And that's a concern that I, I know I have just heard for so many years and that I that that being on Zoom has been really helpful with that, that there's more of a sense of intimacy. Um, and, and I just heard a lot of hope and confusion, hope and confusion, I guess were some themes. Thank you, Barbara, for sharing that. Other reflections? Um, I was scribing in our small group and we had kind of free form because we weren't assigned a question. <laughs> so um, we covered a few themes um, and one of them was really um, which I thought was such a great question. The very our conversation started with this word transition. What did it mean? Like, what's in transition? <laughs> Who's in transition? What does that mean? For how's that being used? Even that word, and how do we define it? And and how do we notice it? Um, and then that kind of got our conversation going in some in some really lovely ways. And um, uh, also that theme of inclusion, what does that mean? Um, and people spoke personally about that um, as well as more thinking about it in the broader sense, um, including how, how inclusive is our um, Sangha around a diversity of teaching, um, different interests and in different kinds of teaching or levels of teaching, forms of teaching, and um, then there was also a, a pretty significant recognition of how much has already changed over the recent years and how different we are. For those of us who've been in the Sangha a long time, kind of how different we are now than even five years ago, even three years ago, and how change and transition is happening. You know, that we're, we're in a change process, we've been in a change process, and now maybe there's a new form and a new way to carry it forward. Mm, yeah, I really appreciate those sentiments, changes happening. And someone in our group um, spoke to appreciating this particular process of, you know, being able to talk closely and share. And I thought that was crucial. Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're really clear that we are inviting everyone's full engagement and participation throughout this process. And if there are other ways that would help you, each of you engage more, we would love for you to let us know what those are.
It is so interesting that um, a number of people talked about Zoom helping has helped people feel more uh, connected and helped us create more intimate spaces um, for connection. And I find that fascinating. And the difficulty of blending in person and, and virtual um, also. I'd also like to note in our group that there was a sentiment that just the opposite, that it's, you know, that it was really hard to shift from in-person, you know, real life connection. So just that, that that's there too. Thanks, Sharon. Absolutely. Yeah. Everyone's experiencing these, this differently. Yeah. Catherine, um, I just wanted to add, I just really, really appreciate the, the folks in, in my group. I was scribing for my group um, that they stepped into the vulnerability mm. and spoke very honestly, and it felt really good. So yeah. I just wanted to offer that to the group. Thanks so much, Benita. Yeah, when we can really open up with each other and share what we're really feeling and thinking, just um, it really creates that feeling of connection is so important. Thanks, Benita. All right, well, um, I this, this is the, only the first of, of a number of engagements that we have planned. So just you know that we will be um, organizing more conversation as we go along through the process. Um, so, you know, in terms of our next steps, we're uh, the DEIJ advisory group and I, again, we meet weekly and we'll be reviewing all of your responses to the discussion questions. We really thank you all for your engagement around those questions and invite you is after this call ends, if you continue to have thoughts that you would like to share with us, feel free to email those. Um, you can upload them into the Google form that Dolly had posted in the chat earlier. We will follow up with an email and we can, we'll repeat all the links um, so that you have all of that. Um, and we'll be using um, all of your responses again as part of our assessment process. Um, so just want to, again, remind you all that we invite you um, into future meetings and that we'll have to speak with the Hearing Ethics and Reconciliation Committee, as well as the DEIJ advisory group members. Just feel free to send any of them your feedback, your input. Um, we'll continue to send out the Google form link so that you can upload your comments there. Um, and so just want to express my deep appreciation to everyone for participating in this meeting. Um, we also have a meeting evaluation that Dolly will be posting in the chat. Um, so that's the link that she just posted. Um, you're welcome to click on that link and open it up so that it'll already be open when the session ends and you could go ahead and complete it. You can also hold your phone's camera up to the QR code if you prefer that method. So just take your phone camera, hold it up to the QR code and you'll see a yellow box that you click on and then that will take you to the evaluation as well. You can complete it on your phone. It's a very short, simple form, and we really, really, really value your feedback about this session. So please do take the time to complete the evaluation. We'll also follow up with a, an email with that link as well. So just a reminder about the confidential comments form link again. Um, and welcome you to stay in contact with us, continue to provide your input, stay engaged, um, and let us know again, how we can, um, uh, any, any, any feedback that you have for us. So again, thank you so much to everyone, the DEIJ advisory committee, um, the advisory group. Thank you so much to all the facilitators and scribes who stepped up to help out for this evening's meeting. And thank you to every one of you who came and participated and, and were open and vulnerable with your thoughts and feelings. Really appreciate that. So we'll go ahead and um, close the meeting in time and just want to, again, express my deep appreciation and invite all of us to um, have a moment of appreciation for this meeting and for everyone's participation.